Hello Windows Universe, in this video we'll talk about how to protect your online privacy. For a more in-depth look at the topic, we will link an article in the description down below. Use antivirus software. Most people are aware that a virus can cause computer problems by redirecting a browser to a specific site, slowing it down, or locking it up completely. If someone makes a backdoor into your system with the virus to scan for information, and possibly log your keystrokes to steal your passwords, you might not be aware it's happening. Antivirus computer software is good at catching these Trojan horse viruses that sneak in and wreak havoc on your privacy. You can use the software to scan your downloads automatically, manually scan anything that looks suspicious, and schedule scans to run regularly. Update it often, and let it scan your network and all your attached devices, along with your computer. The software can also help you strengthen your computer's firewall to prevent problems long before they start. Use a virtual private network. One of the best ways to protect your privacy when you're online is to use a virtual private network or a VPN that masks your IP address and replaces it with different server's addresses. This keeps sites from being able to trace your IP and what you do online. A VPN keeps you anonymous and your risk of being hacked drops as a result. One, be aware of online scams. The list of scams people can and have fallen prey to on the internet is extensive. Fortunately, if you're aware of the most common ones, you can protect yourself. Some of the most common scams to guard against are malware, viruses and email attachments or links have been a problem since the internet began. If you're not expecting an attached file in your email, even if the email appears to be from someone you know, don't click on it until you're sure. The same goes from emails from strangers and suspicious links on social media and forums. Don't open them. You can be directed to a site where malware is downloaded to your computer. Antivirus software will stop most of these, but new viruses, especially ransomware, are developed all the time to try and get around the algorithms. So use your intuition. Phishing. When you get an unexpected email like one that claims to be your bank, social security, or some other organization that needs your information because of a problem or an update, the link you're supposed to click will look normal at first glance. But when you hover it over your mouse pointer over it, but don't click on it, the actual address will be different from what the link says it is and won't match the official website. Contact the alleged sender in a new email, text, or phone call to verify if you're uncertain. Usually, when important information is shared from an organization, it will come in the form of a letter. For instance, the IRS will not call you and tell you that you need to pay them a certain amount of money. If you do owe them money, they will inform you through snail mail to reduce the likelihood of getting hacked. Here's a favorite one, tech support scam. Tech support scams are also common scams that can take place through a phone call or email. Generally, someone will inform you that there's a problem with your computer. You will be likely instructed to call immediately to get it taken care of. The friendly tech support person will tell you that your ISP has found your computer to be heavily infected with viruses and they're here to help. They'll request remote access to your computer. Be sure to never let anyone have this access. They'll download your files to look for bank and credit card information, and sometimes they'll cripple your computer so they can ask for payment to repair it. And then other com consumer scams. There are many scams to try and separate your from your data and your money, ranging from car warranty and IRS scams to lottery scams. Fortunately, it's simple to avoid most of them with a the spam filter. Set your email to filter spam automatically to keep most of the scams out of your inbox. If some get through, never reply to them. If you do, it alerts the sender that they've reached a real address they can hijack as a reply email to send spam to other people. Protect your data. Hackers can't steal information if they can't find it. Vital data like passwords, bank account numbers, your social security number, and date of birth shouldn't be available on your computer. Also, do not send this information through emails or chats where it's almost never encrypted and very rarely secure. 
Keep all important data off your smartphone, too. Phones are even less secure than computers, so never text this kind of information or send it by email or private messages where it can be easily intercepted. To keep your smartphone from being able to track you, go into your phone settings, go to Privacy, go to Advanced, Permission Manager, go to Location, And you can shut off the ability of your phone to track your locations. Do not use public computers. Public access computers and Wi-Fi are risky and insecure. If you must use one, don't log into any site or put your personal information into any form. If you log in anywhere, your password is vulnerable to being stolen. If some circumstances arises where you must check your email or do other business on a public computer, make sure you log out before you leave and consider changing your password as soon as you, as you have access to a private connection again. Use more secure email and messaging. Gmail is handy, but Google is one of the worst offenders when it comes to privacy. No free email is ever going to be as secure as an email account you pay for that promises encryption, security, and privacy. Direct messaging apps suffer from the same issues. The companies that provide them, like Facebook, often collect and sell your data, and the messages aren't secure, making them easy to intercept and use and to learn more information about you. A secure messaging app like Wire or Signal can help you keep your private conversations truly private. Remember, do not give away your data on social media. About 70% of American adults use social media, and it seems like everyone posts when they're at restaurants or vacationing out of town. Social media already tracks you and profits from your personal data. But advertising your physical location adds another layer of risk. Protect your privacy by never posting such information on social media. Double check your social media profiles and privacy settings to be sure you know exactly what's on display and who can see it. If your posts are public rather than restricted to friends and contacts, pictures of your home, cars, and surrounding areas can give a stranger enough information to find you. Predators can look at your posts and learn your children's names, ages, general location, schools, and more, putting them at risk. Strangers can figure out when you're on vacation and when your home is empty. Protect your privacy even more by not filling out popular social media, getting to know you memes made up of list of questions. They typically ask things like the street you grew up on, your first pet, your mother's maiden name, and many other personal questions. Many of these are common password recovery questions. Sites asked if you happen to forget a password, making a hacker's job easier. There can be consequences of sharing too much on social media. Take sufficient security measures. Choose strong passwords. Any passwords you store in your computer are fair game if someone can get access. But even if no one can hack into your system, they still might be able to get into your online banking, social media accounts, and email if you choose passwords that are too easy for hackers to guess. Try and use a unique password for every site, and don't use real words, names, or anything that someone can guess, like the places and things in social media memes. If you can easily remember it, a hacker might be able to figure it out. Long passwords made of capital and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols are strong passwords that are nearly impossible to guess. Now, you won't remember truly strong passwords, so write them down. If you lose your list of passwords and must have them more readily available, computer software can help. A password manager is an option as long as you choose one that's encrypted and secure. Many password managers will even recommend extremely strong passwords for you. Use two-step authentication where available. In the event that one of your passwords gets compromised, one more layer of protection that can protect you is two-step authentication. Set it up on every site that offers it so that when you log in, you have a complete a second step to verify it's actually you by letting the site send you a text message, an email, or an automated phone call. 
If you get a message asking for verification that you didn't initiate, change your password for that website immediately. Try and be a savvy online shopper. Data shows that 96% of Americans shop or plan on shopping online. It's easy, it's convenient, and offers a selection that no physical store can really match. It's also a risk to your finances if you let the sites where you shop save your payment information. Resist the urge to click the box that saves your payment info for the next time, no matter how convenient it seems. If the site's data gets breached, and this is something that has happened many times to retailers both big and small, your credit card number can be exposed. Spend the extra few minutes it takes to enter your payment information each time you make a purchase. And be sure to only buy from trustworthy online stores that have secured designations designated with the HTTPS prefix in their URLs. Delete tracking cookies. Many sites, especially retail sites, deposit cookies in your browser to let the website recognize you so you don't have to wait long each time. Unfortunately, many also track your other online activity. You can look in your browser settings easily to delete any or all of them. Go to whatever menu tab there is. Go to settings. Go to cookies and other site data. Each browser will give it a different name or similar name, but it's all basically the same. In some cases, you can set up a uh, specific do not retract question. Some of them you can actually see all cookies and site data. And you can choose to delete them. Avoid using smart home products like Google Home, Alexa, and Siri. They listen all the time so they can respond when you trigger them. If you want to lock down privacy in your home or on your devices, don't use these products at all. But if you come to rely on them, you still might want to change your settings to keep them from recording everything you say. Many people don't realize how much information is stored by these devices. Google stopped recording and saving interactions by default a couple years ago, but if you have an older device, you might need to change your settings. Siri doesn't allow you to opt out of being recorded, though the recordings are not connected to you. If you use Alexa, check out Amazon.com to delete its recordings. The privacy issues that come up with smart home devices go even beyond sound recordings. If you use smart appliances from thermostats to light bulbs, every time something turns on or off, that information is captured and transmitted to a server, adding to the cache of information about you. Try avoiding these devices or look deep into the settings and policies of each one so you're aware of exactly what's being recorded. Do the best you can to stay secure. To keep your information as secure as possible, remember that every device that you use has access to the internet and every site you use is a potential vulnerability. Don't put anything on your computer, your phone, or the internet in general that you want to keep private. Be aware of common scams and avoid them. Use a privacy search engine like DuckDuckGo. Download, you can go to Microsoft and download something called a Digital Citizenship Toolkit as it has a lot of tips on this subject for you. And finally, examine the settings of all your devices and apps to see what's tracked and collected and adjust them to a level you're comfortable with. For more helpful articles to help you maximize your Windows experience, go to our website, thewindowsclub.com. Do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel where we are always adding new content aimed at making you the master of your digital house. Thanks for watching and have a great day.